Okay, so let's check out the Spark preferences now, the last area in the top part of Spark. Here's all our preferences. Okay, uh, they've got a plus icon next to each one. We can expand them or contract them. Let's just contract them all, pack them all down, and let's look at them one by one. Starting with the sequencer, the tune mode. By default, sequencer steps, which means when you put Spark into tune mode, the buttons along the top here become note pitch buttons that you can use to play the instrument by pitch. If we set this to pads, then in the centre area when we go into tune mode, the buttons along the top and the pads allow us to play the instrument pitched. Okay. Switch pattern instantaneously is set to no by default, which means if I have pattern A1 playing, and I switch to a different pattern, it won't begin playing that new pattern until the current pattern has ended, then it switches. Wait until the current pattern is finished, then it switches. But we can make that switching instant if we want. Pattern A1 is playing. It switches instantly when I click on any other pattern button to play that pattern. But by default, that is set to no. <coughs> okay, next, follow current step set to yes by default. That's to do with the pattern sequencer and the TR button displays here. If our pattern is a longer than 16 steps we have these step buttons here that come into play allowing us to view any part of the steps of our pattern. 116 and that shows on the TR buttons as well down there. 17 to 32 that shows on the TR buttons down there. And when our pattern plays it cycles round. 1 to 16, 17 to 32. 1 to 16, 17 to 32. But we can stop that cycling round. Uh, follow current step, set it to no. And now in the pattern sequence we choose which section of the pattern we want to look at and it stays there. And the same with the TR display, it stays there. I've chosen 17 to 32 so that part of the pattern stays there on the TR display and the pattern display. I choose 116, it updates. So I can look at whichever part of the pattern I want on the TR and the pattern sequence of buttons. Okay, that's what that is. By default, it switches. Quantize record, well we can change that on the hardware controller, but we can change it here, yes or no. Auto start song, well this doesn't work. Well, not, a, not for me it doesn't. Uh, the idea of auto s start song is if it's set to yes and I press song, it's supposed to jump to the song sequencer and begin playing the song. Well, it doesn't. Or maybe it means that it should do that when it's playing a pattern and I switch to song. But it doesn't. So I don't know what the point of that is. It doesn't work. Whether it's on no or yes, it makes no difference. You know, the song doesn't start automatically. Or rather, it always starts automatically, no matter how you've got this set. So I don't really understand what that is about. Maybe it's a bug. Okay, the click output can be changed, but that's only relevant where you're using Spark as a plugin, and then you have access to multiple outs. Otherwise, it's stuck on master um, when you're running Spark standalone. Okay, if I put this, uh, the metronome on, there it is, the metronome. Okay. <coughs> but if I change this output it just goes away because we've only got stereo out at the moment it doesn't put the metronome on the 16th channel here or something like that okay so that should be on master when you're running spark standalone okay otherwise when you're running spark as a plugin assign the metronome to whichever individual out you want okay next auto roll velocity and roller swing mode well they're to do with this effects pad so we're going to leave those till we do the chapter on the effects pad okay then we have uh, next pattern sorry next bank pattern switch mode click on bank switches immediately or click on bank and then pattern if it's click on bank switches immediately then that means that we're playing a1 as soon as I click any other bank button it switches to play C1 or B1 or D1 when the current pattern is finished. So if I press C, okay, it waits for A1 to finish, then it will switch and play C1. Okay, 
Okay. If I was playing a five and then switch to C, it will wait till A5 finishes and then play C5. Okay. But if in the preferences we switch this to press click on bank and then pattern, then if I'm in A5 for example and I press C, nothing happens. It will keep on playing A5, A5, A5 until I next choose a pattern to switch to in bank C. So I'll choose C9, then it will change to that next. But until you choose the pattern in the new bank, it just sits waiting for you to choose the pattern. That's what that is. Uh, automation loop free. Okay, now that is to do with this loop effect thing here, which we're going to do in its own chapter. So we'll leave that until we do the loop feature. But the idea is, is that this loop feature allows you to isolate a section of your pattern and have it loop round and round. And you can make the automation loop with that or not. Okay, by default it's set to no, which means the, the notes just loop round, not the automation, but you can make the automation loop round as well. Okay, that's the sequencer. Next we have the interface. Choose your controller GUI. Well, you know, what you just choose whichever hardware unit you've got plugged in. Choose your skin. We can have the default grey look, a vintage look, which gives us all wooden end cheeks and metal old fashioned pots, or dubstep which gives us this grunky look with bright colours and everything. Okay. Okay, that's your interface. Next, file. Okay, two things here. Save a copy of audio samples in the library. Ask me never or always. Now, um, if I do save as, this is a studio uh, factory project, I, I can't save it, so I do save as, choose the category and retitle it. This is set to ask, save a copy of audio samples in the library. So when I go to save, it asks if I want to back up any samples that I might have included in the project. Custom samples. Okay. Otherwise you can set that to never or always. All right. And then we've got this library path. This is really cool. When you install Spark, and you can see this in chapter 2 of all these Spark videos, if you like, where we show the software install. When you install Spark software, at the point of installation it gives you an option where you want to put the library and the program. By default it puts it on your C drive or your Macintosh hard drive. But once we've installed the library in the default location or wherever else, we can change it any time here. So, for example, if you wanted to change your library location, you go to your hard drive, your Macintosh hard drive on a Mac, go to library application, um, sorry, library Arturia, Spark, Spark Library, there it is, and inside that is the factory and user projects. Well, you just copy the Spark Library folder paste it to wherever else you want it to live in your hard drives and then you come back here and you go to this library path click it once browse for the new library location when you found it click open that's your new library location and you've relocated your library that is a great feature okay next the jog dial the big jog dial here okay it switches between instrument and kit mode but we can make it switch from instrument to project mode. Now if it's set to the default, switch from instrument to kit mode, when it's in kit mode <coughs> and you rotate around and choose a kit and load it, it loads a completely new kit but leaves all the patterns in the sequencer. But if we switch it so secondary mode is project mode, then when we rotate around and choose a project and load it, we're loading the kit and all the patterns. Okay, but by default it's set to kit. And then dial scroll indefinitely. By default it's set to yes, meaning this alpha wheel just scrolls indefinitely. When it gets to the bottom it starts at the top. When it gets to the top it starts at the bottom. But you can switch that off so it stops at, at the bottom and stops at the top. It doesn't go round and round indefinitely. Okay. Then we've got MIDI import export. Now we can drag and drop patterns out of our library. Like this, just drag and drop patterns or banks it creates MIDI files of those patterns and banks. But we can change that so that when we drag and drop banks and patterns away from our library project, we can have that happen as rendered WAVs. And we can change the preference for that in our library export menu here, pattern drag and drop to MIDI file, pattern drag and drop mode to audio file, but we can do it here as well. Export to MIDI file or WAV. And if it's set to WAV, you can make your 
exported WAV render to be one or two patterns in length. You can make it do double the render if you want. Choose drum map model for MIDI pattern import is next, again to do with the library. In the library current project we can import a MIDI file. If you're importing a GM file then here you can choose GM or Spark, the default or addictive type MIDI files. Okay. Choose MIDI drum map model for pads. Spark, custom or general MIDI. Now, you should leave it in Spark when you're using Spark standalone or as a plugin. You can set it to general MIDI or custom if you're needing to use Spark to trigger and create patterns for an external hardware device or for a third party software. If it's a good idea to start with general MIDI because most softwares put their drums on general MIDI and most hardware modules put their drums on general MIDI notes. So you can start on general MIDI but down in the GUI area you can change the MIDI note number of any pad. You just do command left click, there's the MIDI note number, change it to another MIDI note. Now if you change any MIDI note in a general MIDI set pad um, setup then when you go back to your preferences it will switch from general MIDI to custom. That's normal, that's fine, leave it. Just make sure you keep saving so that you save and update any MIDI note number changes that you've done to the pads. So this is only relevant when you're using Spark outside of programming itself. OK, enable default pad velocity. Off by default, no, meaning that your Spark pads will play with their full velocity range, but you can make them play a fixed velocity if you want by ticking this and then setting the default velocity to whatever you want. The default velocity is 64, but it can be changed. Usually leave that off so your pads play with all their velocity sensitivity. And then finally we have <coughs> send MIDI from sequencer and send MIDI from pads. Again, these don't need to be ticked, yes, if you're using Spark just to play its own sounds. But tick these, yes, if you want to use Spark to trigger and create patterns for third-party software or for hardware modules other than its own internal sounds, in which case you do want it to send MIDI from pads and you do want it to send MIDI from the sequencer. Okay. That's the MIDI import-export and that just leaves controller here. Two items. Knob speed, for now, for now, which is normal by default, or con and controller detection. Now, a controller detection just means that when you boot Spark, if it's set to auto, when you boot the Spark software and the hardware unit is plugged in and switched on, it will automatically detect the hardware, or you can do that manually. But any time using this initialize button, we can disconnect the controller and reconnect the controller, remember. Okay. And then we've got the knob speed. This is very important. Set by default to normal. Now, if we look at the GUI here, on the hardware unit, I'm turning the pot now for auxiliary to send, which is set to an echo. Now, I can't turn this pot from the lowest position all the way to the highest position with one twist of my hand when the pot movement is set to normal. I have to grab the pot, turn it with as far as I can twist my fingers, and then let go, grab the pot again, and twist it again. Now, you might find that's too much travel you might want the pot to move faster when you move the hardware controller pot. Okay, We can change that. Change it to fast and then we get fast movement of the pot. Okay, I can now rotate it from its lowest to its highest position with one twist in my hand. Great for doing echo blips like chang, chang, yeah? But if you're doing a very fine controller move you might want it in slow so you get very delicate movement. Like this. Now I need to move the pot a lot two, three, almost four turns of my hand to turn it from lowest, one turn, two turns, three turns. Yeah, so you get finer movement then. Okay. And that's that. I, I leave this in fast as, uh, for when I'm doing live stuff. You know, I, I want to do when I'm playing around with Spark Live and writing controllers. I find fast is better. Okay. But normal is the default. And that ladies and gentlemen, is all your preferences. But we'll come back and revisit these in different chapters where we refer to them. Okay? That's your preferences.